All right, guys, hopefully this is the right one. I'll give you a couple minutes to log in. Again, in this caps lock one, I'm going crazy. Okay, a couple of you guys are in. Oh. There you go. Within seconds, it went down. Oh, you know what? That's probably gonna be better. Move that out of the way. <laughs> what a way to start Monday. Okay, strong wind got to it. Uh, move it a little closer. Okay, good. Well, I'm sorry, Julia, you can't see me. I'll do the best you can. Hopefully, you can see the video when it's posted. Okay, here we go. Yeah, who knows? Maybe because of the weather, it's not it's not working out well. So what? anyway, the key is that we're not going to really comment with each other. I'm just going to go through the questions, and hopefully when we post it, it'll be good to go. So I'm just going to motor through these questions and not very hard. Just going to show you the steps I have to getting them done. Number one, what I like to do is I like to take notes. Very important. How many liters of single water are in six bottles? Right? Six bottles I have. Okay. Each bottle contains 33 hundredths of a liter. Okay. Round your answer to the nearest leader. So I'm going to the whole number. Nearest leader is whole number. Okay. So basically I need six. I want to find out how much are in six of them. I'm going to go 33 hundredths times six. You get 18, 18, 19, regroup. This has two decimal spots, the tenths and the hundreds. This has none. So I'm going to start my decimal here and move it two spots because it's holding two spots there. And I get that as an answer. Now, I'm not done. That's the, that's the exact answer. Now, I'm not done with it, though. I want to know nearest whole number. I'm going to round it. This is the nearest whole number. Nine tells the one to go up. So my answer to number one should be two liters. Okay, take a look at that. I'll give you a couple seconds to look. We had six bottles. Thirty-three. Each one had thirty-three hundredths of a liter. They wanted to round to the nearest whole number. So I multiplied each bottle thirty-three, and made sure I moved my decimal spots to the right amount of spots, and I ended up with two liters as my answer. Okay, let me erase this one. If you need to relook at it, all you have to do is rewind what we just did. Okay, that one I think again on a scale of one to ten. Should be about a two. Should be able to answer that one, no issues. All right, now number two. You have a plumber. This is a little bit harder, but you guys always have some issues with division. All right, number two, you have a plumber. Nine meters. Oh, excuse me, nine tenths of a meter, very important. Nine tenths of a meter, that is very important. He cuts the pipe into four equal pieces. So this is basically what I have. This pipe equals nine meters. I'm cutting it into fourths, right? So I want to know how much goes in each of the pieces. That's all I had. I got some weird answers from uh, some of the kids that handed stuff in already. You have to remember that that's what you started with. That's what you have. Your answer can't be bigger than that because you're cutting them into four pieces. Okay. Now, I'm going to do this. I'm going to cut it into four equal pieces. So here we go. I'm going to divide. And we've got phones ringing. Don't know who it is. Don't care. So in division, what we're going to do is we're going to bring up the decimal point. Okay, there we go. I have that phone. Okay, what we're going to do here is we're going to bring the decimal point straight up. Now, how many times does four go into nine? Or if four goes into nine tenths twice, that makes me have eight tenths. Subtract, I get one. Bring down the zero. Four goes into 10. How many? And it should be hundreds now because we're in the hundreds column. Goes into two again. And then we get. And we get eight. And a remainder of two. I'm not going to go any further because the question says round to the nearest tenth. 
So I only need that. I don't need to keep going any further. So this is my answer right here. Rounded to my nearest tenth. Two tells the two to stay the same. So about two tenths goes in each bracket. Now, that's just doing regular division. If I don't want to do regular division, watch what I do here. I could do compatible numbers, which is what I do, how I do math. Now watch real quick. Oh, it almost went, guys. We saved it. You have nine tenths, right, divided by four. So I'll make this 90, right, or make it nine. You can make it that. You can make it nine. Now, how many times does four go to nine? You don't know exactly. But what is compatible? Four, eight, 12. Closest to nine is eight. So I just did this. Get rid of that number. Made it an eight. Put the decimal up. Two. And now I'm done. I didn't have to do long division. I didn't have to round. I just know how to know how to do compatible numbers, which is the key there. And that's what we're looking for. Now, next one. Two, I could see you giving you some issues if you don't want to do compatible numbers. But if you're just rounding, it shouldn't be an issue. Okay, now, Ashton is thinking of a number. What she divides is Wait, when she divides it by seven, she gets a quotient of seven and thirty-five hundredths. What is the number? So you can say, Miss Kevin, is this guess and check? No, it's not guess and check. What I do is those are numbers you're not as familiar with. So what if I was to say, uh, Adonis is thinking of a number. When he divides the number by nine, he gets three. What is the number he's thinking of? So how about this? Blank divided by nine equals three. So how would you get that answer? What divided by nine equals three? Or you can just multiply. Three times nine is 27, and then you're done. Use the same strategy. Let's look at it like this. So Ashton is thinking of a number. I don't know. But when he divides it by seven, he gets... This, right? So basically all I did was here was I just reversed it. Okay, I wrote it out. I know three times nine is 27, so that must be the answer. Same exact thing here. Let me multiply these two, okay? Let me multiply these two. Like four, 49. And remember, there's two decimal spots. Don't forget those two. None here. So a decimal would have started. Oh, jeez. Why can I block that light? Nowhere. Okay. So, let's see if I can move this here. So, you know, I'm blinded by the light. There we go. Two decimal spots, and you get 51 and 45 hundredths. And that's all you're looking for there. So, let me see if I can move this around here so it's not in the light. That light, this light is the worst. I do that, I still see the sunlight. It's bright out there. I move this back here to there. Where is that reflection coming from? This light now? Bear with me, guys, trying to work out the lighting. All right, let's see, it's a little dark, right? I still see it. I don't think that's going to work. I'm just going to raise it up. Turn this back on. Let's see if I can move this guy around to here. Let me see if I can move this to there. You still get a little reflection, but not as bad. Okay. So, anyway, when you know two of the numbers, when you know two of them, you just have to do the opposite of what they're asking you. So, if you know a number, Divided by 7, and then you get an answer of 9, what's the missing number? You just multiply those two. You just do the opposite because they have fact families. So, if, again, you know a number. It's divided by 7, and it equals 7 and 35 hundredths. Even though it's a decimal and it's not familiar numbers, just multiply those to get your answer of 51 and 45 hundredths. And that's your answer right there. Okay? Sounds good. Okay, now number four. 
Okay, this is this one I think is very simple if you just do your simple math. Uh, Mr. Kozak drives 32 and 27 of a mile from his office to his home every day. After driving, he drove this already 15 and 65 hundredths of a mile. He stopped at the dry cleaners. How much further? So if you're, you're doing a, a trip and the trip lasts 32 and 27 hundredths, right? That's how long his trip is. On the way, 15 miles in, about, he stops at the dry cleaners. Okay? And they wanted you to round your answer to the nearest mile. So you got to solve it first and then round. So all I'm going to do is, okay, how much trip is left? That's what I want to know. So basically, that's what I got so far. This is 1565. How much is left of my trip? So in order to find out what's left, I'm just going to do some simple subtraction. In subtraction, we bring the decimal straight down. Six, that's a two. So then the, the missing number is 16. But they didn't want that. They wanted you to round your answer to the nearest tenth, or nearest mile, excuse me. So if I have this, guys, the nearest mile is right there. So what is the 6x? The 6 to do, it tells it to go up to 7. Numbers to the left stay the same. Numbers to the right turn to 0. So my answer should be 17 miles. That should have been your answer for number 4. Okay, here we go. Now, number 5. Remember, if you're just tuning in now, you could always just watch the link later. It's going to be up for you to look at. But again, I'd rather you try it yourself first. Please don't use this as your answer cheat sheet. That's not what it's here for. Holy moly. We're the most popular family in the world right now. Okay, now, number five, four gallons of low fat milk equal $13. And 80 cents, right? So what we're trying to find out is how much does one gallon of milk equal? Because I want to find out eventually how much six gallons cost. So the only way to find this out is to find out what one cost. So what does one gallon cost? If we can find that out, we're going to be able to find out how much 100 gallons of milk costs. It won't matter. So in order to find out what this is, what do I got to do, guys? You should simply know you got to divide. So... Do 1380 divided by 4 should get what? 3. That's 12. Gives you 18. Gives you, bring the decimal up. 4, 16, 2, 0. So each one gallon of milk costs $3.45. Okay? Four gallons cost 1380. How much does six of these cost? Hopefully, you know you're just going to multiply. 345 times 6. That wind is something else today, huh? 18. And it should be $20.70. Do they ask us to round in this question? They do not. So my answer to number 5 is $20.70. Okay. Not that difficult. And the, number 6 is identical. It's the same exact question as number 5. They're identical. They're just different numbers. So look, I have three cans equals 180. They want to know how much nine cans cost. Now, if you wanted to, you could say, okay, three, I'm going to do three times three and get nine. So let me do this times three and get my answer. Can you do that? Yes, you can. Or you could find out how much one can cost. And what I did here was I divided three, 180 by 3 with the decimal, and I got $0.60. Cents. So one can cost $0.60, cents, and then I did $0.60 cents times 9, two spots, bring the two spots over, and I got $5.40. But if you wanted to do this three times, because there's 3 times 3 is 9, and then 180 times 3, you're going to get the same exact answer of 540. So that's basically the answers for today's math. I don't think it's too challenging. Again, there's some definitely definitely some questions. Number three I thought was hard. 
Uh, other than number three, once you figure out the formula for that, you should be able to get it. Uh, so I'm going to uh, leave you guys for now. Hopefully that helps you. Uh, the writing assignment for those of you that are listening in now. Adonis, who are you talking to? Not sure who that was, Adonis. So we'll just let him go and uh, we'll go from there. So 